Oh, Florence and I are going to be eating this calamari. I'm going to let her eat it right now from Tony's. We're in downtown San Francisco. It's a beautiful day in the 80s. Oh, boy. You know how much we love calamari. Yes. <laughs> so I'll have her taste it. Wow. Incredible. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> they, Tony is spoiling us rotten here. Thank you so much. Three pizzas now. <laughs> okay, now have that calamari. Oh, these are amazing. Oh, my God. This is the bill. It's a little spicy, sweet. Uh, pizza. Now, that one I made up is like our pepperoni grandma style. I added some different mushrooms on it, a cup of char, a cup of water. Now, Tony, do, when you do make up these pizzas, do you literally just kind of think what would go together? Do you go with tradition? What makes you make decision of what type of pizzas you have on your menu? You know, doing it for 33 years, um, I got that asked, question actually asked me recently. It's, it's a little easier now. Before, when you're kind of getting into it, you think about it every day. Now, you know, sometimes you just go to a Mexican restaurant and say, oh, you know what, these ingredients are great on pizza. So, pizza is so unique because it can be anything and everything. But at the same time, you got to follow certain flavor profiles and go down the route. But is it traditional or is it chef driven? I mean, really, it could be anything. Um, but for me, lately, um, it just gets it gets easier and easier to come up with the pizza. Stuff. The agave, to me, is just really genius with that little little hinge of heat. I saw agave going into cocktail. 15 years it was agave agave. And you as a food service person you can never get agave after your rep and bring it in. Bring it putting agave on pizzas uh, before you know hot honey was on. I think what makes your uh, what I love is the breading on your calamari. It's so like a lot of restaurants the breading is a little too thick for me. Yeah. And I like yours it's light it, and it lets the calamari speak for itself. It's an Italian flour I use caputo, so it's a gluten-free that's really light. Wow. We have our gluten-free pizza and a thick crust light. But at the same time, the thickness of the calamari, the cut, how we cut it is important. So we have a really thick cut. It's not really a thin, thin cut like a strip of calamari that you just don't get any. A lot of meat, a little bit of breading, at the same time, just soak with that buttermilk overnight. It makes it totally super tender and delicious. It's incredible. It is that's, incredible. That's amazing. Now, are there any things that you really think that you have traditionalists that'll say something like, wow, that's a little bit over the top. I, I like my old tradition. But when you come to Tony's, what I love about yours is you have something for everyone, something for the traditional person, old school Italian, Florence's yeah. first generation Italian. And then you, you have something that is kind of over the top, like that is just so amazing, like the agave and the pesto. Yeah, you know, for me, you know, you have that California style that can be that innovative, out of the box, chef driven pizza. Then we have on the category that's out of the wood fire, but you look at old school classics like a Jersey tomato pie, or you look at some of the styles that we have, like if you're from Rome or you're from Italy or from Naples, we have all the traditionals. But at the same time, you may see me doing an over the top Sicilian pizza with burrata and agave yeah, and yeah. pesto. Um, so yeah, I do a little bit of everything. Yeah. And Detroit people, I know a lot of people from Detroit and the East Coast come here and they say the West Coast doesn't have pizza. Tony's is world renowned. He's done contests. Uh, the Michael Jordan of pizza tossing, seven awards, I believe. And he was also voted the 15th best pizza in the world. We're talking Philly, we're talking Sicilian anything you want but detroit people i'm telling you come out here i've been disappointed a little bit no i'm not going to say any names but some of you have given us some restaurants i'm telling you the best detroit pizza is right here i love Thank tony's you. pizza you know we take pride in our detroit we're the first ones to bring it to california let alone in san francisco and before the whole renaissance came in you know i went out to detroit quite a bit in fact in the day i was searching for pans when they didn't exist you could buy them. now you can buy them as an operator Getting the cheese, getting that true brick cheese blended with the white cheddar. Um, getting that cheese was extremely difficult. Never came to California. So sourcing the ingredients back in the day, sourcing the pans, 
really enjoy the science behind the dough. For me, I pour makeup and I let them rise for a long, long time to get nice and thick, but at the same time, it's digestible, it's light and airy. But it's not too like Roman esque on you when you look at the structure, like, okay, this is Roman. It's like Detroit, but yeah, it's a little lighter, not so heavy. But wow, these ingredients are great. So just working on that over the years and that process uh, took a lot of time. People don't really like to understand that. The effort to really bring those ingredients here. So it's pretty awesome that you love it because, yeah, we do some out of the box Detroit. So you'll see, like right here, the Deville pinch and gooey over the top, and a little bit of honey. It's super, this pizza is super delicious. You look at that, that crown and the caramelization of that crust. It's just beautiful. That's that yeah. white seeing the sunlight come through it. Work of art. It is a work <laughs> like, of art. It's amazing. Now, last thing, people, where can people work? Because you have such a chain of amazing restaurants. You trained your chefs to cook pizza like yourself, something many people don't do. Everyone wants to expand so quick. You took a while to expand, but I think you did it properly. What are some of the other restaurants that you have in the area that you would like people to check out? I have a great team, and it always starts with a team. I think it's important, the training side of it, and that's why it took so long for me to go from one, get one store for 17 years, then a couple stores in a few years, and I have a ton. But uh, Pizza Rock in Las Vegas, Slice Houses that are all over the Bay Area, now coming to L.A., Thousand Oaks. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different ones. Tony's Pizza in San Francisco, that's a flagship, that's what I'm at today. Capo's is my Chicago style concept. So if you like cast iron, and I do Detroit there, Tavern style, Cracker Thin, Deep Dish, or stuff, we do it all at Capo's. So those are the primary locations. Uh, yeah. We're so thankful for Tony and for all of you that have helped us with our channel. We hope you come down. We are going to list all his restaurants. It's going to take a while, but we're going to list all his restaurants because we have people from all over the world that do traveling, a lot of Vegas people, and we want you to go over there. And some of our celebs, we really want you to go there, take some photos, give it to us, give Tony. This is the best pizza guy I've ever seen. And I love pizza so much. So uh, thank you, Tony, for your humbleness, your hospitality. You're very kind. You have two friends for life, that's for Thank sure. So yeah, much. pizza for life, friends for life. Yeah, if you're at a Raider game, a Niner game, a Warrior game, or a Giants baseball game, check out Slice House with Tony G's. Thank you. Appreciate it.